Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about these things here. Well, they come in lots of shapes and sizes, but these are the four in one, and now with the new jumper technology, the five in one multi protocol modules. Now they can come separately like this, where they plug in the back of the radio, or there's also the latest generation of things like jumper, and this is the Radio Master TX16S, where it's actually internal. The other antenna here is actually for my Crossfire system. But there are some common misconceptions and gotchas when you are using the MPM modules. The MPM modules uh, come with an awful lot of technology built in and they're being developed and updated all the time in firmware. So it pays to update the bits of firmware on the module, whether it's internal like this or it's separate as a module that you plug into back of another radio like FreeSky or something else. But there's also some pro tips as well. I'm going to go through all of those in this video. I need to say a massive thank you to Pascal, who is the lead developer on the multi-protocol module stuff. Pascal is a lovely chap and he has spent a bit of time helping me uh, make sure that all the stuff that I'm about to represent is technically accurate. Now, as with all of this stuff, this information that I'm about to give you is up to date as of the recording of the video, and I'm recording this in early August 2020. But wherever you can, go and have a look at the wiki and have a good read of the content. There is an awful lot of information in there. I know it can appear a little bit overwhelming, but if you're going to be using the MPM modules, multi-protocol modules in anger, it definitely pays to go through that documentation because there's a lot in there that you don't realize these MPM modules actually do. And hopefully by watching the video, I'll explain some of the tips and tricks. Now to help you find a specific answer that you might be looking for, there are time codes below this video, as well as every time I show something on the screen that's a URL or a link, again, I'll pop it down below to make it easy to find. So let's talk about the first thing. This is about the channel order on your multi-protocol radio. Now, when you go to flash it, there's actually several different versions available, TAER, AETR, and a couple of others. And that needs to match the default channel order in your OpenTX radio. Now, you can find the default channel order in your OpenTX radio by going here in OpenTX. And similarly, you can find the channel order on your multi-protocol module by going here on the radio too. Now, they should match, and the reason that they should match is that the channel order doesn't set the channel order coming out the antenna. I'll talk about that in a moment. It tells the multi-protocol radio what the channel order is to expect from OpenTX. Now, that's important because the module does some very clever things. If you select Spectrum, which default order is TAER, and you have a different channel order on your radio, because the multi-protocol radio knows the channel order that's already there, it will automatically move and reassign them into the right order. Similarly, if you're using one of the Fataba protocols on here, the default Fataba order for channels is AETR, and you have something else on your radio, again, the multi-protocol module is very clever, and it will move things around. The only exception is for uh, things like FreeSky that don't have a default channel order, be whatever you want. Uh, it just passes through directly. Now, the trick is here is if you're going to update this, I'll talk about updating in a minute, then always update it with the same channel order as the one that's already on the radio and you won't fall foul. The other cool little trick is if you updated your radio with the latest versions of OpenTX and the SD card, if you go into the system menu, in there is something called the multi-channel renamer. If you run that, it'll detect what protocol you have set for the particular model that you've got set up, and it will name all of those channels inside the model that you're using. So no matter whether you're using Spectrum, uh, Fataba, whatever it is, it'll put it in there. Even things like channel 16, which is like an auto bind switch, again, I'll talk about that in a minute, it'll just all appear and make it very, very simple. So if you are not sure what the channel order is or what additional extra pieces get set up in that protocol, using the multi-channel renamer will take care of all that for you. How do I update the module is another great question. Now, I've already done a video on this. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. You go to the website, you download the version with the right uh, channel order, TAER or 
as I've just described in the first answer. And then you pop it on the SD card in the firmware's directory, fire up your radio, go into the system menu, go into the firmware menu, select that bin file, and then flash internal, if it's something like this, or if it's plugged into the back bay, flash external, and it's pretty straightforward. Again, link to how you go through that process in a little bit more detail in the description. It's worthwhile keeping an eye on the updates and updating regularly. There are lots of improvements and additional protocols coming all the time, and it pays to keep up to date. You'll notice in the last version of OpenTX, as I'm recording this, it might warn you after you've updated the latest version of OpenTX that the module needs an update, and that's probably going to happen more and more as the technology continues to evolve and improve. There is also a way to update the bootloader within the multi-protocol module, and that, again, I'll put a link in the description if you need to do that. But with a modern version of the radio, like something like this, the Radio Master, you're probably not going to have to do that. Another common question that I get is, uh, is such and such a protocol supported? Is this protocol, is that protocol supported? Uh, again, because it's changing all the time, the best place to look is in the wiki. Everything is listed in there of which protocols and what kind of telemetry is supported. And because it's changing all the time, I'd always refer you there first. By updating to the latest and greatest firmware, you're always going to have the latest and greatest versions of those protocols on your multi-protocol module. So if you're not sure whether or not something is supported, go and have a look in the wiki and search for that particular protocol that you're after and you'll find the answer. I have been asked quite a bit over the last couple of weeks as I'm making this video, is FreeSky Access supported? As of the date of recording this video, uh, that's not something that the development team have looked at yet. However, if FreeSky have done with Access what they did with the AWCST version 2.0 protocol, i.e. included encryption, then it might not appear on the NPM modules. So we'll have to watch and see what happens with that Fingers crossed, FreeSky haven't done something daft with Access like they tried to do with AWCST version 2. Now, one of the things that I didn't realize, and it took me a while to figure out, uh, is there is a tuning option for some of the protocols on the radio. Now, not all of the protocols need the tuning to be done, and the tuning is about the fact that the chips in here, the oscillators and everything else, have a certain range of operation. And for manufacturers, they tend to kind of tune them and uh, get them spot on before they leave the factory. With the 4-in-1 modules and the hardware that we have here, then it makes sense to tune some of the protocols. So for example, the Fataba um, S FHSS, uh, the one that I used to do the E160 helicopter setup, it is absolutely worthwhile going through the tuning process. Now what the tuning just does is it just tweaks the output of the chips that are in the NPM module to give you the best possible signal. And if you see the tuning option underneath the protocol that you're using and you haven't gone through the process, I heartily recommend that you do. And that's about making sure that you know and have the best possible signal. What you do is you move the tuning so that you go one way until it fail safes, you go to the other way until the receiver fail safes, and you know the middle of those two values is going to be the best setup for that particular protocol for your radio. And while we're on the options underneath all of the settings, don't forget whenever you're setting up a protocol, do make sure you go through things like setting up your failsafe so you don't have things like flyaways too. The multi-protocol module supports all that stuff and it's absolutely worthwhile spending a little bit of time making sure all that's set so that you don't lose the model. Another common question is, can I copy models from my old radio onto my new one and use the multi-protocol module? Yeah, absolutely you can. I've done a video that shows this already, link in description. But what you do is use OpenTX Companion. And if OpenTX Companion supports the radio that you have, then you can copy your older radio and then migrate them and copy them back down onto your new radio. And then go into the settings for each of the models and change the settings to, to be whatever multi protocol module that you want. Just be careful when you're updating from an older radio, it might be an older version of OpenTX, so OpenCompanion will then migrate it from the older version of OpenTX to the current version that's 
the companion is set for and then it's also going to migrate from your other radio onto something like this and the switch assignments may be slightly different so whenever you do that do make sure that you are checking each of your models things like your arming switches in the right place your mode switches in the right place and um, all of that goodness is set do a thorough bench check on every single one of the models before you go out to the field to fly so you don't find something untoward when it's hooting around in the sky above your head while we're talking about copying from one radio to another you can do something called cloning now cloning isn't available for all of the protocols. I'll put a link down below for those that it currently supported for. But what you can do is set this radio up and you can make it pretend as though it's a receiver. So for something like FreeSky, it can pretend it's a D16 receiver. You can then bind to it from your older radio. And then this one can pretend to be the old radio because it's just learned the radio settings by going through that bind. And that is really good. So what I've done here is I've copied all of my old models all, all my models from my old radio, my uh, aging Tyrannus, and they're on here. I've also cloned it as well. So now I can link to all of the receivers in my models by using that cloned radio ID. It's a fantastic feature. It means that rather than me having to find the receiver inside 20 or 30 models buried away inside foam wings and all that stuff, this radio can pretend to be my Ultranus and work great doing it. Link to my video where I show all that down below. A couple of last quick tips. First of all is how do you bind a receiver? Binding a receiver is exactly the same as you would with any other system. If you're using a protocol where there's a bind option underneath, then the tip for this is put the receiver into bind first. That might be pressing a button on it while you power it on. It might be shorting two pins, whatever and then select the bind option in the radio under the protocol that you've just selected and you should get a bind and away you go. And that's the pro tip. Some of the binding sequences for the multi-protocol radio are a lot shorter than for radio that you might be coming from. So as your old radio might sit there for a couple of minutes beeping away in bind mode, the NPM might come out of that bind mode very quickly. So I would put your receiver into bind first and then do the radio second, which might um, be the odd way around the way you're used to doing it, but you'll get it to work a lot better doing it that particular way. There is also the option to set up a bind on channel. Now bind on channel sets channel 16 by default so that you can pull a switch and you can have the bind happen. Now this is useful for lots of those smaller models that use protocols that don't remember the bind information. So between batteries you have to go and go through the rebind process. Now lots of the more advanced protocols uh, remember the bind information and store it so you don't need to worry about that. But if you are using a protocol where you constantly have to rebind it every time you power it on, then it, by using things like the channel renamer that I talked about at the top, again, uh, link below, if you run that for the model that you're looking at, it'll show you which channel is set. And quite cleverly, what you can do is just by pulling the particular switch that's assigned to channel 16, it will do the bind option uh, simply for you. So for those little models, if you have them, that don't remember the bind information between batteries and it's just a pest you kind of have to rebind every time you plug it in uh, do check out the channel renamer and do check out the documentation for that protocol uh, you can by the flick of a switch go through the bind process again automatically could be useful potentially to set up some kind of logical switch to make sure that that only works when the throttle isn't raised to stop you accidentally binding to it when your radio isn't in a safe condition and last point is again to just refer you back to the wiki. The wiki is very comprehensive uh, and has lots of information in there. If you're struggling to find a little bit of information, go and having a look in the wiki. It is well laid out. It's relatively easy to find information if you know what you're looking for. And hopefully after watching this video, you know some more stuff that you didn't know. You know about the channel renamer, you know about things like the bind on channel. You also know things about why the channel order on the module is important and some other bits and pieces too. So thank you for watching. If you have any other questions that uh, you're not sure about, do pop them on the video. And if I get enough of them, I'll make another video and cover those too.
Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.